Well, this is my friend, Deshaun, and uh, he goes to the same school as my two children do. And uh, he has two really big interests, I understand. One is in building things. He helps his dad a lot with all kinds of projects around the house. And he likes television. So I've invited him over here to build something. We're going to do it together, and we're going to be using a brand new table saw that's safe for kids and a new material. So you ready to start? Okay. Ishan and I have decided to build a box complete with hinged lid, metal corners, and a hasp. Now, Sean, this is the, the wood that we're going to be using today, but you know what? It's not really wood. Yeah, it looks cool. But... It does look cool, and it feels kind of like wood, but yeah. it's actually something called polyurethane. You know what this is made from? Um, what? Soybeans. Soybeans? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Oh, cool. And, and the reason we're using this instead of wood is that the saw that you're going to be using um, will cut this pretty easily, but it won't cut wood, and that's one of the reasons that it's safe. Yeah. All right? I've made up some okay. templates, okay? There's one for the top of the box. There's one for the bottom of the box. There's one for the sides. There's one for the front. And there's one for the back. Okay. okay. So what, what you're going to do is you're going to take these templates, you're going to put them on the material, and you're going to trace the outline, first of all. And then we're going to go over here to the saw, and we're going to cut all those out. Okay. Projects designed for older children may require reading measurements and transferring those measurements to the saw. However, since we already have a template, I'm going to use this to set up the saw. I'm going to lay the template right up against the blade like that. And then I'm going to bring the, the fence in like this. When set, we want the template to slide snugly between the fence and the blade. Whenever we use a power tool like this, we want to protect uh, our nose. We don't want to get breathing in any dust and we want to protect our eyes. Okay. Okay. The blade on this table saw I've invented is oscillating instead of rotating. Consequently, I can touch the running blade without injuring my skin. Even though this saw won't cut skin, it's important to teach children to respect the tool as if it were the real thing. Safety and proper operating procedures learned here are important and will transfer to the use of traditional power tools when the child gets older. Congratulations! This is the piece you cut out. Let's put it on top. Perfect! Okay. Good work. To make these cuts right here, yeah. we're going to use this. Oh, I love those. This is called a miter gauge. Yeah. Right? You know about this? You've seen this um, before? Yeah, yeah, I think mm -hmm. I have. Really? Wow. Now here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to lay this in here like that. Okay? This is called a stop block. And what it's, what it's going to do, it's going to tell us exactly where to, where to position that piece that we're going to cut off. So drop this in here at the very end of your template. And this is a clamp. So you're going to drop this clamp on like this. Anytime you want to cut several pieces to the same length, you do this. Go ahead. Okay, so we got the top. Yeah. The bottom. Back. Front. And two sides. Nice line. Yeah. Almost any glue can be used with this soy-based polyurethane. Today we're using a quick-setting cyanoacrylate, or super glue as it's sometimes called, readily available in almost any hobby store. Okay, go ahead and put the side on. This is called a vice grip, or a locking plier, okay?
We're going to use standard six penny finish nails as pins to hold the parts together until the glue dries. And just shove it in. Like that? Mm hmm Push it in. Far as you can go. Far as you can go. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Okay, now to unlock this, you push that lever down. Good. Now we're going to take the hammer and hammer it the rest of the way in. Good. Terrific. Okay. Just a little bit. There you go. The great thing about this non-toxic vegetable oil-based polyurethane is that it's biodegradable, can be attached with wood glue, epoxy, polyurethane, or hot melt adhesives, as well as screws and nails. Next, we use a nail set to countersink the heads below the surface. Good. Oh, we're going to have to block those holes too, right? Yeah. We repeat the nailing and gluing process for the remaining sides of the box. It feels so cool. A nice feature of the non-toxic soy-based polyurethane material is that it allows children to learn good nailing technique quickly and experience real progress, eliminating the frustration that children often feel when trying to drive nails into wood. Ordinary wall spackle is used to fill the nail holes. Once the spackle has dried, it's time for a little sanding. What we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of sandpaper and we're going to fold it into thirds, like that, and like that. So it can be strong, eh? It's stronger. See, it's stiffer, yeah. all, right? all right? Now you can go ahead and sand. Both the spackle and material sand easily and dust is removed with a paper towel or cloth. You're just a natural at this, you know what? <laughs> Unlike other types of rigid foam, this soy-based polyurethane can be painted with aerosol spray paints. It can also be coated with acrylic latex or oil-based paints. Uh, you did a great job on the painting the box. And that's the top, okay. Now, we just gotta make it so that we can open this up and then close it again, right? So I and think you need this. You know what this is called? Um, hinges. Hinge, uh huh. Hinge. And this particular hinge, it's really long like this, is called a piano hinge. Now we're going to be using these little tiny screws here. See them? Yeah. Now the only problem is in this material, uh, those screws are so small that they really may not hold well enough. So we're going to add a little epoxy to them. Today we're using an epoxy that has a work time or pot life of about 10 minutes. I'm going to hold this hinge in position right here and I'm going to ask you to put a little hole right in the middle of each one. Perfect. I'm going to hold it like this and I'm just going to wipe it in the glue and then push it in the hole. You do the same thing. The end of it? Mm-hmm. Just hug it up. Wow. Fantastic. What we're going to do is, I'm going to hold this under here. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I can tell you've done other projects. You've had practice working with Dad, right? Yeah. Close. Mm, open. Now, I think we need a couple of... Uh, Ooh, corners for you. Right, so we don't have to worry about... This. Maybe for the bottom, what do you think of these? Oh my way, what are these? They're, they're like little feet, they go on like that. Yeah, I definitely put these. You like those? Let's get it started. Now, no keepsake box would be complete without a way to keep the contents secure. So our last step is to add a hasp. Ishan will fit it with a lock later on. Damn. 
You did a terrific job today. Okay. You think about that? You know, you, you cut out all the pieces for this. You glued this all together. You painted it. You put on all the hardware. You know, I think you did a terrific job. In addition to paint, there are lots of options for finishing a box like this. It can be covered in paper, fabric, foil, emblazoned with jewels, decorated with charms, or whatever a child's imagination can conceive. 